How's it going out there? Uh, I'm Jay Curley. I'm from Ben & Jerry's. Uh, I run the consumer marketing in the US, and then I lead the communication side of the global activism and advocacy work that we do. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a real quick, about 10-minute overview of what that actually means, an ice cream company that is trying to do really activism in the world. And then I'm going to be joined by some of my friends and collaborators and partners um, Beth Montori Rolls from Water Wheel and Fish, uh, Andy Bernstein from Headcount, and then Brody O'Brien, uh, who I work with at Ben and & Jerry's. And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about how each of our organizations have done that. Uh, so that's the plan. We'll leave some room at the end for some, uh, some Q&A. Um, so I'll just run through a quick couple slides, if we can get those up. Um, this is a talk of actually, or a very abbreviated version of a talk of, I've given a decent amount, and I, I usually do it uh, for business leaders, usually digital marketers or CPG marketers. And the idea is to get uh, bands and, or excuse me, businesses and brands to understand how they can use uh, not just their philanthropy, but their actual organizations, the, the work that they do every day to, to grow social movements and to create change in the world. And so what I wanted to do is just tweak it ever so slightly to say not just you know, brands, but add in bands and artists and festivals and venues uh, and try to, as best I can, make it relevant uh, to the music industry. Um, but, you know, Ben & Jerry's has a great long history with music, going back to 1988 when we uh, launched Cherry Garcia, uh, and 1998 when we launched Fish Food. Uh, but for the most part, even in the U.S. where we've been around for 40 years, we actually just had our 40th anniversary last weekend. Um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, oh, and I should just clear up right now, Ben and Jerry are still around. They are great guys. They are still best friends. So clear up some of the Q&A for later. Uh, but still, this is how most people still know Ben and Jerry's. It's just an ice cream, and, that, and that's kind of it. But there's a lot more to what we do, and even in just some of the flavors like, like fish food. Um, so we'll show a quick video of uh, that. Whoops. There we go. Whether you're a rock band, a corporation, an individual, if you have anything to offer, you should. There have been quite a number of beach closings. Something can look fine, and it can actually be in trouble. When Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavors come along, getting the soda established, we're going to give away the proceeds. It really is about everybody in the community giving a little bit that then can make a difference. So that's actually just a, uh, a preview of a little seven or eight minute mini documentary we put together a few years back. So go on to the Ben & Jerry's YouTube channel uh, later today and you can check out that, that full film. Um, but it really tells the story about how um, the band Water Wheel and Ben and & Jerry's have been working together for 20 years uh, to really raise money to help Lake Champlain um, and, uh, and, and clean it up. So I think that's the thing about Ben & Jerry's is while most people know us as an ice cream company, we've been doing this activist work uh, really you know, almost since the very first day. And what that means to us is that we stand for something. We act on our values. And I think the part that's, that's relevant and can be really transformative is we ask all of our customers and our fans to join us. Uh, because us as a singular business, I, you know, we're growing and things are great and we've been around 40 years, but if we disappeared tomorrow, um, a lot of people would miss their Cherry Garcia and Chunky Monkey, but the world would go on. But if we can use our, our place and culture in our, in our business operations to help grow broader social movements, that's where we can have real impact. Um, so what do, what do I mean by that? How do we actually do that? So for us, 
uh, what we try to do, we're not making up social movements. We're not building campaigns or strategies to solve climate change or racial equity in America, right? We're going to the progressive leaders in that space and we're saying to them, what are you trying to achieve and how can we as an ice cream company help you, right? So that's really what we try to do is we try to connect with um, progressive leaders to understand what their strategies are. And then we bring things to the table that NGOs, uh, politicians don't have, right? We're a lot, hopefully, more fun. <laughs> and uh, we can draw a crowd. We bring free ice cream and, and we can bring people together. If you think about the power that bands and venues and festivals have in that regard to connect with their deeply loyal fan base and bring them into social movements, uh, the power can really be transformative. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the idea of cause marketing, of purpose-driven marketing, of corporate social responsibility, it's a, real, it's a real kind of hot topic, it's a real buzzword these days. And don't get me wrong, that's a really great thing. Um, businesses need to be doing uh, better in the world. Uh, what we try to differentiate, though, our approach. At the end of the day, what it looks like in the world may look very similar. But how we approach things is different. So a, a, a brand out there trying to do cause-related marketing will often start with, what do my customers care about? How, um, how can I get a part of a movement that is aligned with that so that they can like me more? And that's fine. Good things come from that. But our approach is very different. Our approach is, what are our core values as a business? What's the change we seek in the world? And then how can we unlock our fan base to achieve that, that change, right? And, and again, if you think about uh, uh, approaching things um, as a band, as a venue that way, uh, you, you have such deep relationships with your, uh, with your fans that there's so much that, that you can unlock. Um, and I think the last bit to think about, and, and again, I'll, I'll use the Ben and Jerry's example, but really th think about your work and what you do. What we try to bring to the table is who we are. We happen to be a fun, optimistic, a little bit quirky, irreverent ice cream brand. So we take those tools, we take our little cartoon cow and our you know, cow puns, and we bring that to social movements. So when we show up and we're talking about climate change, we're doing that with a save our swirled flavor, right? And not the approach that, say, Greenpeace would take. And what that allows is a doorway for people to join movements that may, you know, put a hand up to an organization like Greenpeace, right? And so that's the role that, that we can play in these, uh, in these social movements. And I think, again, if you think about your venue, your festival, the, the artists you represent, um, how can they use their unique personalities uh, to bring more people into social movements? Um, so I'm just going to really just give a quick uh, snapshot of some of the issues we've uh, been working on just in the last couple of years. Um, they really kind of range, uh, range from climate justice to social equity uh, and, and have a lot in the last couple of years focused on uh, racial equity and voting rights. That was that. Um, oh, there it is. So, uh, and, and marriage equality. And, uh, you know, marriage equality I'll just use as a quick example. Because in 2009, when Vermont legalized same-sex marriage, we were one of the only companies that had been involved in that fight, and we were one of the only companies that celebrated the moment. And in 2009, that was very controversial. Thank you. Um, but fast forward just six years, just six years, and marriage equality became the law of the land. Uh, and we were there, and we were there to celebrate it. But at that time, it felt like every major corporation in America changed their profile to a, to a rainbow. And that's fantastic. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not knocking that. Far from it. I, I think that's fantastic. What that speaks to, though, is, uh, is how fast progress can come when we grow social movements. Right? And again, we're not in any way claiming that we, uh, we, we solved marriage equality in America. Right? But we were one grain of sand right, on that pile that finally tipped the scale. 
right? And so I think, if, again, if you think about your venue, the artists you represent, the festivals that you're producing, how can you be part of those movements and, and, and do a little bit more? Uh, I'm going to close my little bit before I bring my friends out here uh, just with a quick two-minute video uh, that we did with uh, Sankofa down at the Many Rivers Festival a year and a half ago, I think it was, uh, which, which was a fantastic festival, and we worked with Headcount there to, to register voters. Come on up, friends. Beth, Andy, Brody. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, it's going to be much better now because it means I'm not just up on a stage talking by myself. But better for them too, Jack. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> um, so uh, if you guys could just real quickly uh, introduce, introduce yourselves and, and Headcount, Waterwheel, uh, and we can go from there. Do you want to start, Beth? I'll start. Uh, my name is Beth Montori Rolls. I've been working for FISH for 23 years this year. Um, we started the Waterwheel Foundation in 1997, so I was there from the very beginning, and I've been involved um, since day one. Uh, Waterwheel came about three different things kind of happening at once. One of them was Ben and Jerry's had worked with the band to create this ice cream flavor and the band had decided that they wanted to support something locally that was meaningful, and they chose the cleanup of Lake Champlain, which in all honesty, we had almost no idea what that meant at the time, but we figured it out. Um, and also, uh, the band had been giving money locally within our community, and this formalized it by creating Water Wheel. And the third thing was that at the time, we had had Greenpeace on the road with us, and they had just told us that they were no longer going to be supporting a touring initiative. And so we sort of decided collectively that it would be great just to create our own touring initiative. So instead of having Greenpeace be the one cause that we were supporting, we decided that we would support the local communities that we visited while we were on tour. And um, all of those three things came together and pretty much that's what Waterwheel still continues to be. We do have some other things that we do as well, but we're still moving in those directions still 21 years later. Cool, thank you, Beth. Uh, the the Waterwheel is an amazing organization. I've known of them for 
21 years now, <laughs> but gotten to work with them for the last 10, and it's been fantastic. Uh, Andy, can you please introduce yourself and Headcount, although I'm sure hopefully everyone knows Headcount here. <laughs> well, thank you, and I want to thank everybody for this amazing weekend and the event we had last night that was just so off the hook, and people were so generous, and I want to give Gribo a shout out, and KP, I don't know if he's here, but we're, it was really incredible, so thanks so much. Um, Headcount started in 2004 uh, in the build-up to the presidential election. Uh, myself and Mark Brownstein were both like just kind of really amped up about what was going on in the world and we had this idea for kind of channeling what we knew about grassroots marketing in the jam scene to try to get people out to vote. I had written a book about fish called The Farmer's Almanac. Mark is in the Disco Biscuits and we just kind of learned a lot on Fish Lot about how to kind of kind of sell an idea, and uh, we said, well, let's, let's make that idea of voting. And it really took off that very first year we registered almost 50,000 people. We were on tour with Fish and The Dead and Dave Matthews, and, um, and just kind of created a whole organization out of that. And then uh, I think a key turning point that's really relevant here is in 2013, after doing our third presidential election, we kind of looked at what we were and said, well, all right, we're very relevant every four years. We're sort of relevant every two years. And in, in the off years, we kind of struggle, but we feel like we have so much more to offer. We, we've always aspired to be the community organizing arm of the music scene and not just a voter registration group. And uh, at that point, we really started looking at what we were capable of from having all these great volunteers and all these great relationships and uh, we started something called Participation Row uh, at the Lock-In Festival. Basically, it's all Pete Shapiro. Everything we do is somehow related to Pete Shapiro. And we created a whole area where people could engage, not just around headcount, but all the different nonprofits. And we created some cool incentives. You could win a guitar signed by uh, all the artists. And from there, we've grown that to involve Ben and Jerry's as a partner. Uh, we've taken it out on Dead & Company tour. Um, and we really started thinking about how we work with brands and how we, uh, our kind of motto is everybody wins. We want it to be a win for the bands, we want it to be a win for the fans and also the corporate partners. And it's been a big part of how we think about Headcount is creating all these partnerships so people can engage with us like we did on Fish Tour a couple years ago where not only did we register voters but we gave out free ice cream and worked with Ben and Jerry's to just make it bigger and more meaningful, and then took that to lock in. So it's been a real, real fun ride. This particular part I really enjoy, and gotten to know people like lead these fine folks, and I think we're just, we're always trying to push the envelope, always make it more fun, and in the end, get people to be active citizens in the music scene, and it takes, it takes everybody, and sometimes it takes free ice cream. Speaking of free ice cream, Brody, um, why don't you introduce yourself and a little bit about uh, how we work. Cool. So uh, I'm Brody O'Brien. I sit on the U.S. marketing team with Ben and & Jerry's, and uh, Jay did a really nice job uh, introducing the company and all the things that we do, so I'll spare you guys those details being repeated. Uh, I figured I'd just tell a quick personal anecdote about how I ended up on the for-profit side trying to create change with business as a vehicle. Um, I started my career actually as a, as a raft guide in Alaska, about as far away from New York City as you can imagine. But I would take cruise ship passengers into the woods on these boats for a lot of times, the first time they'd ever been out in real nature. And I carried a picture of a glacier in my, in my life vest, and I would show them this glacier in 1960 that we were rafting past and said, you can barely see it back up that drainage now. And if I could get one of you know, every 20 people who is in my boat to go back home and think a little bit differently around climate change and maybe take some action, get involved in their community uh, in addressing climate change, then that was a big success. And so I've had kind of a meandering path to get to where I am now at, at Ben & Jerry's. I worked for a while on the nonprofit side and uh, I think got a real appreciation for how much organizations do with how little. Uh, but when you're driven by passion, you can accomplish an amazing amount. 
And so for me now to be uh, at Ben & Jerry's, I'm in a really fortunate and very unique position where I can um, use our digital and experiential marketing capabilities to hopefully amplify the work that organizations like Headcount and Waterwheel are doing. And so having been on both sides of that equation, uh, I, I hope it gives me some understanding to help further our work together. Um, but one thing that's really driven home for me is that we all on the, the for-profit side, if you will, have an enormous opportunity to help elevate the work that our partners are doing. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Um, let's start talking a little bit about the impact that an organization can have, like an engagement organization like um, Headcount or a, uh, essentially a, a philanthropic arm like the Water Wheel. So Andy, how do you, how do you think about measuring success? What, is, what does having an impact mean to, to Headcount? Well, we, we pay a lot of attention to numbers, for sure. Um, voter registration is, is obviously a really big number. But when we do participation row, that's honestly not even on our radar. It's really about overall fan engagement, how many actions get taken. So at Lock-In this year, 10,000 actions got taken at participation row. That was the, the highest number we'd ever done. And that, I, I honestly don't remember how many voters we registered, but I sure as heck remember that. And um, that's, I, I, we're, we just all have so much pride in that element. And um, we wanna see fans come to an event and they're gonna have fun, they're gonna see music, they may party, but if we can get people to just do a few things that make the world better, then I, I sure feel good about the work we're doing. Nice. And Beth, you talked a little bit about the kind of touring arm of Water Wheel. Uh, so when Fish is on the road and you guys are coming into a community, uh, you know, it, it always feels like there's a lot of great organizations there. Uh, how does how does the water wheel, you know, either connect with those organizations or and, and think about, um, you know, how you can have an impact with them? Well, there, there's a couple of things there. One is that uh, finding the organizations, it's a couple, they, they come to us in different ways. People reach out to us directly, fans who know that water wheel exists, um, suggest organizations that they either work with or know about. Um, sometimes, uh, there are larger organizations that will send us, when the band announces a tour, they send us, here are all the people, all the different groups and all the different cities that you're going to be in. The water keepers do that, for example. Um, and uh, we have, having been out there for a really long time and the fact that the band used to tour a whole lot more, we have some long-standing relationships with some organizations out there as well. Um, one of the most important things I would say for the organizations to know coming to work with us is that they have to have like a 30 second impression time because the fans who support Water Wheel are very important to us, but they are there to see the band. And so the message that the organization gives out has to be extremely small and very understandable in that amount of time. They're the ones who are the most successful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. We talk about, you know, being at a, a concert, a festival, and I think, you know, take something like Participation Row, you know, you're, you're out on the festival grounds. I think that's part of, the, part of the cool part about partnering together, right? Like, we can, I don't know, use ice cream to draw people in, whatever it might be. I don't know, Brody, you wanna kinda talk about that a little bit, how, how we kinda use that as an anchor. Yeah, sure, so, uh, I mean, I think, even coming from the nonprofit background, I think we've all had the experience where you see somebody walking down the street with a clipboard, and my first reaction is, oh, you know, how do I look at the ground or keep moving and, and <laughs> try to get on with my day? Uh, and for Ben and Jerry's, you know, our secret weapon is free ice cream. Uh, you know, not every company has that in their portfolio, but we're really fortunate that we can set up somewhere in partnership with a water wheel or with a headcount or another organization, and we say, hey guys, you know, come on in, grab some free Ben and Jerry's, and pretty quickly a line forms, uh, and that creates an opportunity for the, um, organization there to engage in a deeper conversation with the organization or with the uh, the fans who are there and you know we may only get Beth 
32 seconds instead of 30 seconds because somebody's there, you know, got their ice cream, but it, it invites people in in a positive frame of mind. Um, you know, as you think about your business and, and how you might create some of that magic yourself that draws people in, I think we all have opportunities. Uh, you know, I think about what Andy has done with Participation Row, and they've done a really nice job bringing artists into Participation Row and saying, hey, come on in, have this intimate experience with JRAD or somebody else that you really look up to. And so you've created that nucleus of energy, and it allows a, a really memorable experience to come out of that, but also this opportunity for, decent, for deeper engagement with the organization. You know, one of the things that, that this guy did was last year when we were headed to Participation Row, it was a new setup. It was a big tent, and he started sending emails about like woodwork and like uh, all these like technical specs. We're like, what does this guy have in his head? And I get down there and he has built a like vintage ice cream shop out of, what do you call those things? Like old pallets. Yeah, out of pallets. De and they painted lucky them. we didn't have the food inspector come. Uh. <laughs> it was so cool. It, it just looked awesome. And, and it was a big reason why we had our highest numbers ever. So one of the things that's great about a, a brand like Bread and Jerry's is there's a lot of creativity. Everything looks super sharp. And it elevates us as an organization. And I'm sure, Beth, you've had a similar experience at Waterwheel where you're dealing with pros and you're dealing with people who were very mission aligned. And that's not always gonna happen with a corporate partner. And that's why like Ben and Jerry's is Ben and Jerry's because they have a, a level of creativity behind the causes that other brands might only use for selling a product. Yeah, for sure. I've had the exact same experience with Ben and Jerry's. We, Waterwheel's, mostly a volunteer-driven organization. I'm the only full-time year-round employee, and I don't take any income from Waterwheel. So, um, and I also run Jump Records and Who Is She Music, and I am the general manager of the company in Vermont, so I'm pretty busy. And when I can go to these guys and say, hey, I have this great idea that maybe we can do next year on tour, and then they bring their entire professional staff in to support the whole thing from the graphics to just how great they are at events. It's really a great partnership for me, for sure. It's, it's fun for us because Beth will have an idea like, let's break the world's record for the largest cowbell ensemble ever. I'm pretty sure Fishman will lead the band. Do you guys want to do that? So yes, yes we do. And we will have our designers do the posters and we'll work on the permitting and all that good stuff. And, um, and I think that's, uh, that's a fun way to you know, create really memorable things. And in, in, in doing so, I think we raised $25,000 for Hurricane Irene relief um, and had a blast, so. Yeah, it was a very memorable thing for the fans too. I wanna share something that's, that's coming up that we haven't told anybody, so we, um, not too long ago, I got introduced to somebody who's a big fish fan who happens to be the chief marketing officer for Celestial Seasonings. And he told me the whole history of their brand, and I think probably everybody knows Celestial Seasonings, or herbal tea, whatever, you don't think about it at all. And he told me about how they've actually always been very environmentally conscious. They've had the same person blending their teas for 40 years. They're like the original hippie company, but they'd never really told that brand story. And that they really admire Ben and Jerry's for what a good job Ben and Jerry's had done that on the outside as well as the inside, and they had just been doing it quietly. And he had an idea of doing a Ginseng Sullivan tea, which is a fish cover song, and also a Ramble on Rose tea. And so we got, um, Headcount got Jim Pollock to do a, uh, a Ginseng Sullivan art, and AJ Mousley to do Ramble on Rose, and this summer, at the shows at Curveball and Dick's and Dead and & Co. and Lock, and we're gonna be giving out these teas for free to come and engage and register to vote and sign up for local election alerts. And it was like, you know, you got, it was another brand really trying to model what, what you did and also the fact that the guy was a fish fan didn't hurt. So yes, see yeah. us this summer, we got some free tea for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I think just a quick note that the authenticity matters, you know, like uh, the music scene in general, the jam scene in, in, in particular, like you can tell an imposter from, 
from a mile away. And so I think it's important that your intentions uh, are coming from the right places. Um, we're going to get to Q&A in just a sec, but um, one of the questions that, that I have, and you know, I think both organizations are really headcount and water wheel fish, really entrepreneurial in nature. Uh, thinking about starting out, right? Back in 2004, back in 1997, um, any advice you know, to your former selves or to someone thinking, uh, thinking about how you know, the artists they, they represent can get more involved in movement, movements? Like, what advice would you give uh, to folks? Well, I'll just say that I know what was very helpful for me. When we started Waterwheel, we really didn't have, when it became very public, when it all came together in 97, we really did not know what we were doing. You know, no one in the management company at the time had any experience with running or being on a nonprofit board. We came up with this really crazy idea, not crazy idea, but it was a good idea, but it was one that had crazy lofty expenses behind it. We were like, well, we know how to do marketing, you know, so why don't we create this marketing entity that markets Lake Champlain, and that will help get people more involved. And ultimately, um, once we sat down and put a bunch of numbers to it, we were like, well, we're going to be spending most of the money that Ben & Jerry's is generating for us from this flavor on paying overhead costs. So we backed off of that. And then I said, you know what? I, I'll go on a board of something. I'll try to get on someone's board and see, you know, what it's like. And so I still actually am on boards. How many boards are you on? <laughs> I'm only on three right now. I chair uh, two of them, and um, I'm on a regional board and a, and a um, city board and um, and a New England wide board and. Uh, that has been very helpful, um, and I volunteered for, you know, the, the state always has money that they're giving away or federal money that's giving away in grants, and you can volunteer to be on a review committee, that kind of a thing. So I, I would say that that has been really very helpful to me. You know, my, my experience that I often tell people is that You'll never accomplish more in a shorter amount of time than you will in the first six months when you launch something. There's just something magical and there's an energy and I look back at the first six months I had counted. It's like, how did we do that? Like with no people and no experience and no staff, no office, we went from launching it in February to we were doing 25 shows a week in April and we're still about that level of 25 shows a week. And, you know, I think for anybody who's entrepreneurial or doing a startup, it's like what I tell people is capture those early moments because you'll never relive them. And I see it now with Parkland. I see it with the March for Our Lives movement. And these amazing kids are just getting so much done and it's so incredible. And eventually there'll be process and there'll be staff and there'll be more lawyers and more of these things. It's like just, just blast through everything right now and don't slow down because it, it is a magic time when you're, when you're taking something off the ground. Can you, can you talk just for a sec about the, how um, Headcount is working with those students there? Yeah, sure. Like, um, well, it started, interestingly, Cameron Kasky, who is the kind of leader of the student m movement, his father is the lawyer for Jam Cruise. So it all comes back to this community and, and our, what we have here. And he reached out to us four days after the shooting and said, hey, this is what's happening. Here's who my son is. You guys should get involved. And um, our whole team kind of pulled together. We started doing some research or sharing what we knew about underage uh, pre-registration, 16-year-olds registering. We tweeted it out. It got 23,000 retweets. And we started moving toward approaching them about doing voter registration at the march. And we ended up running it in 30 cities, including DC. It was the most incredible day. Uh, we registered 5,000 people around the country. It was our, just DC alone was our number one event in our history. And um, now we've got a, a few other things I can share. We're gonna have March for Our Lives on Dead & Company tour this summer. We haven't announced that yet. Um, very, very exciting. And we're also, um, 
The day after the march, we announced a goal that 90% of high schools in America would have a voter registration drive this academic year. And our hope was that David Hogg and Cameron Kasky would take this up as a cause and put that idea into the universe, and then we would support any school that wanted to do it. And as of this morning, we'd had 425 schools around the country sign up to do these voter registration drives. And there's thousands more doing it without us. So this has just been such a wild ride and be able to kind of just see the opportunity to really change things and so much bigger than us. Like we'll never know how many people get registered through that and we don't need to know. We just, we're creating a norm and this notion that there's an inequality that some schools had voter registration and some didn't. And because of these amazing kids and this platform they have, we're gonna fix that and we're fixing it right now. And I am so proud of this and I'm so proud of our team. And it all started because Jam Cruz's lawyer's kid is a genius. Like, and because, and let me just stop one thing. And because of a very serious tragedy also, and I, I never wanna talk about it without talking about that, but it, it has been a truly wild ride. And Ben and Jerry's came out to March for Our Lives and gave out free ice cream. And uh, I just want to share a thought from the, from the business perspective, both around what Beth was saying about getting started and then how it relates to the value of partnerships with organizations like these. Um, you know, I would, cons I would encourage anybody who's thinking about doing this just to go and take a first step. Just go show up. You really can't fake showing up. And once you're in that room, listen, and you're gonna see opportunities. So you're gonna start building those relationships. But that's really, that's all you gotta do. You don't have to have it all figured out. The pieces will come together if you take that first step. And once you have those relationships, those uh, connections are gonna pay off for a long time. And I, I think about March for Our Lives. So, um, you know, Jay talked a bit about some of these issues that Ben and Jerry's has been an advocate for for a long time. And you may have noticed that common sense uh, gun legislation is not up there. It's not something that historically we've taken on. We've always thought about it, but it hasn't been the right time. Um, and so after Parkland happened, we felt this real urgency. We said, this is something we have to have a point of view on, but you know, where do we start? And to have the opportunity and the relationship with Headcount who said, you know what, we're going to DC and we're gonna register voters at the march. That was a really natural opportunity for us to then step into this new issue set um, and benefit from the knowledge and the partnership that Andy had to help us start exploring that space. So it's just the beginning for us, but I don't know if we could have taken that step if it weren't for the support that we got from our partner. So I think about that too as you're selecting uh, organizations you might be collaborating with. Great, thank you all. I think the good news is we have about nine minutes and 28 seconds left for some Q&A, uh, if there are any questions from the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I guess not. Back here? Oh. All right. Hey guys, how we all doing? Uh, great presentation, thank you all very much. Um, I'm Dave Rackhauer, Game of Zonk, Sabbatical Life. A uh, question I had for you guys, I actually flew here to ask you guys this question, because we do similar things and we provide value-added components inside uh, music festivals, we do pavilions, meet and greets, things like that. Um, within that, we have a product line in the cannabis industry and we bring all our cannabis partners into these pavilions and we do educational outreach and we do exposure. What can you guys, speak on in regards to mon monetizing the process? Because obviously we, we all have you know, value-added components to help each other, both the festival side and our side, but at the end of the day, how do you guys speak on actually funding it? Because at the end of the day, we all run out of money. Yeah, I, I think at least from, you know, from the for-profit perspective, um, we don't do it to make money. Oh, no, no, no. And, and I, no, no, it's, but it's, it, we end up benefiting from it as a business in the sense that we build deeper relationships with our fans. And, uh, you know, to a degree, we can measure the ROI on that, but to a degree, like, that's why we've been around for 40 years is because we're not just, you know, a, a pint of ice cream on the shelf. And I, I think we're very, very conscious when we're doing the activist work that that work is the only goal. Um, now, when we do that right, 
we get a lot of other benefits, right? Well, and let me, let me just point out, um, the question I want to know is just in regards to funding the efforts, not yeah. profiting from it. Yeah. You know what I'm I, so it comes out of our marketing budget. It's in our P&L, and that's, that's where it comes. We have a totally separate foundation that does philanthropic giving, um, but that is not uh, often in similar issue sets, but not coordinated with the work of the business. Okay. Yeah. And on our end, what we're trying to do is create value for partners so that they'll come back year after year. And um, we're, this year, we've already raised about $175,000 from corporate partners. And I think it's because we actually, you know, like the Celestial Seasonings example, like they, part of it is because the guy's a fish fan, let's be honest. And, but part of it is because they have a story they want to tell and show the community that they're part of the community. And for a huge brand like that, there's real value. And we're an authentic place to support. And so we, I spent so much time thinking about this. How do we structure these agreements so that everybody wins and these partners will keep coming back? I mean, we're in, I think, our fourth year with you guys. And I, someday we'll stand up here when we're old men and talk about our 40-year uh, partnership because we're going to keep providing value, and that's that's um, you have to approach it that way. That we're really giving something; it's not just getting something back. We're really giving something. Well, we'll have 95% um, voter participation at that point too. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, question up front here. Oh yeah. I'm glad I don't have to yell. <laughs> um, but um, my name is Renee Vogelsang. I'm an environmental and climate activist. Um, and I just first wanted to say thank you to Ben and & Jerry's and Water Wheel and Headcount. Um, I've been picking Andy's brain a lot um, about his success. And, but I've worked with national, state, and local grassroots groups for 15 years now. And the environment, many of them have benefited from Water Wheel Foundation and Ben & Jerry's. Um, specifically, I worked on the campaign to ban fracking for five years. In here in New York State, and we collected more than half a million petitions, many of them from concerts and festivals, at fish shows, um, other you know festivals here in New York. Um, so I've firsthand seen the power, um, and we banned fracking in December of 2014 here in New York. Um, so just it wouldn't have happened without support from groups like yours on stage and the work that you're all doing. Um, I had a question for the festivals panel yesterday that I didn't get to ask about environmental impact that we have at our concerts and festivals, so reducing plastic, um, also powering up something I'm working on as a group called Rock for Renewables with my friend John Medeski um, to you know, power up our events off of renewables but also promote renewables and build the political will. Um, and to you guys, what are partnerships, you know, kind of outside of just doing concerts and festivals and outreach there, what kind of partnerships do you think that we could have with the music community, whether it's, you know, online, other types of events, you know, special con events and concerts, you know, for uh, fundraisers? I mean, what are different types of partnerships that you've had outside of directly at like a concert or festival, um, you know, things we could do? to yes. promote causes. I think from, a, from the Ben & Jerry's perspective, again, we historically aren't going out and trying to figure out what the moments are, but we have great partnerships, I think, uh, in, we've done this twice now, where we've worked with uh, an organization called Pathways to Paris. They just recently did a concert at Carnegie Hall with uh, Flea and Talib Kweli and Patti Smith, and uh, we partnered with them in Paris during the COP, um, the UN's climate conference, and uh, that was more of a standalone event where they came to us and were looking, to, looking for a partner. And it was the kind of event that was you know, headlined both by Flea and Bill McKibben, right? So it was a, it was a moment where kind of activists and artists were, had similar billing. The other thing that happens is that when an artist is, is uh, you know, doing something that is authentic to them, you know, they may come to us. When, um, when Dave Matthews did the concert in DC for Standing Rock, um, it was something we were working on too, so we reached out, um, we have a, you know, we used to have a flavor with them, we have a relationship with them, uh, and we ended up working with them to, to help fund the live stream uh, so that that one concert could then reach, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, I got one more here. I just want to give props to everybody there 
up on the stage today and say thank you very much for everything that you do. I want to just mention something um, on the smaller side of things that you guys do that's really, really helpful, just to perhaps bring some more awareness to it or punctuate what you do a little better. Um, in Nelson County, where we have Lachan, unfortunately, about 21% of the county has had need to go to the food pantry at least once a year. And so we, Andy, through Participation Row, we, you know, we get the local little non-for-profits together, and they really suck at promoting themselves. They're, they do really good work, you know? They're getting food, they're feeding people, and, they're, and their booth, no one's ever there, so Andy finds a volunteer to put in their booth, and you know, and then we have a check presentation. They've never shown up to accept the check, ever. They can't even do that. But they do really good work. So the fact that Participation Row is there to come in and support these locals that don't know how to do that, don't know how to plug into all this stuff, it's just been such a, I'm just so proud of what you've done. So I want to say thank you for that. And I also want to say that it's been five years since Andy started Participation Row at Locken, and, and uh, we've raised close to $190,000. We've done a canned food drive that's brought in almost 15,000 cans of food. Um, and I think nationally, what's the number, a million four? Because you've taken it elsewhere? Yeah, through the dead, like huge numbers. And Dave, you're gonna a get material here. A million four in five years, okay? Let's hear it for these guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, 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 is Lori here, Lori Leninger? Because Lori Leninger is the person, I, I think Lori's here, who has treated each and every one of those nonprofits like they are rock stars. And, you know, like everybody knows Headcount as the voter registration people, and we'll probably never change that. But a huge part of what we do is like just trying to pay it forward and trying to treat every other like nonprofit like we want to be treated. And Lockin helped us do that. And Ben and Jerry's has helped us do that. And Waterwheel has been doing that for a long time. These guys have been bringing these type of local groups out to fish shows. And that's how we got to do it. Like I'm, I'm such a believer in the values of this community and the values of Pete Shapiro and this whole thing that we just keep kind of passing it around and we just keep helping each other out and lifting each other up and we just get bigger and bigger and better and it's real it's been happening in this scene for a long time and we it's going to keep happening because of of just the the values that the music kind of it's it's the underbelly of it all um we have unfortunately run out of time uh I just want to take a second to thank you all for, for, for listening. Most importantly, thank you, Beth. Thank you, Andy, for your years of partnership and all the fun that we get to have together. Thank you, Brody, for uh, kicking ass on the team. And um, we'll see you uh, out at a concert soon. <laughs>